Hey everybody, Jake here from Bearded Gear, and I have a first impressions to do for you on this little guy. This is the Matt Diskin IDF, which I have learned, thanks to Joe, who loaned me this knife, aka the Knife Whisperer, who will be linked down below. Uh, Joe let me know that IDF stands for Integral Diskin Folder. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense to me, since this is an integral folder designed by Diskin. Um, so this is a, a very intriguing knife. Um, Joe actually reached out to me kind of recommending that I check out this knife. This wasn't one that was really on my radar um, to get in hand. Uh, like I mentioned in the unboxing I had handled, I think they actually had two or three of them on the table when I saw them at CCKS, uh, California Custom Knife Show. But I had kind of forgotten this knife existed. Not because it was bad when I held it, there's just a lot of knives <laughs> at a knife show, and I just, yeah, it, it had slipped my mind that this was a knife that was out there. I'm sure if you had mentioned Matt Diskin to me, I would have thought, oh yeah, I held one of his knives, but this just wasn't on my radar, and that's fair. There's too many knives to constantly be really on anyone's radar. So when Joe recommended I check this out, offered to send it to me, I was pumped. I was excited to get one in hand again, and I remember thinking it was nice, and I was excited to kind of see a little bit more what it's made of. He was happy for me to be able to carry it, have it in pocket, uh, do a little bit of at least minor cutting with it to see how it performs, and so I've had this knife in pocket now. Um, I actually carried it as a secondary, which it's a little big, for a secondary, but I carried it as a secondary for a whole day and as a primary for about a half a day. And uh, I've developed some pretty good first impressions so far, so I figured now is the right time to do this. And at the end of a whole week with it, then I'll go ahead and do um, a full review. So first of all, um, just to get everyone up to speed, the materials we're playing with here are, in essence, M390 blade, titanium handle scale, or scales, <laughs> since it's an integral, I guess you could just kind of call it a handle scale. It is a frame lock, so you can see frame lock functions just like any other frame lock. We have a stainless steel insert with an over travel stop, and uh, <laughs> I'm still not positive what to call this blade shape. Someone in my comments called it a shark point, I think, which I kind of dig. A stabby shark point, I think they said. Um, I'm not sure what the official name of this blade shape is, but I quite like it. It almost has like a bayonet grind type of thing a little bit with that swedge. The way that swedge is ground almost seems bayonet-ish to me, um, but I really, I really like it. It's got a great belt satin finish. The titanium has a nice finish as well. Um, I'm not going to be brutal enough on this finish at any point to see how durable it is. I'm going to take every precaution to make sure I don't mess up this really nice loner knife. So um, this isn't going to be like an in-depth use review, but I've done a little bit of cutting with this knife so far. Um, just I opened like two packages with it, cut through some tape. I did a couple of passes through a little bit of cardboard just to feel how it did. And so far it's cutting really, really well. I like the profile on it. It's got a, a decent edge profile overall. The way this flat grind comes up really tall you can see it's not quite a full flat grind. We do have a flat up here, but it's a really tall flat grind, and it just it, it passes through material well, and it gets to a reasonable thickness behind the edge. This knife doesn't feel chunky behind the edge to me at all. As kind of an all-around EDC knife, I'd say this grind is certainly more than passable, and uh, it's got a very good sharp factory edge on it. It's not like the stickiest, sharpest factory edge I've ever felt in my life, but it is nice and sharp. There's the tiniest bit of a heel right down here at the very edge of the blade where it meets the sharpening troil. Just the tiniest flare there. It's almost perfect in terms of being sharp all the way to the troil, but it's just the littlest bit of heel. Um, yeah, I really, I really, I like the way this blade performs, and the tip is really stabby, especially because of the swedge, I think. But the blade profile, it's actually a fairly thick stock. Um, I would not call this a thin blade stock, and it actually retains a decent amount out toward the tip. It just, uh, I don't know, the angles they've put on it make it really pokey, um, and I like that. I, I find lately I'm preferring 
less robust tips for EDC knives. Like, perfect example. I love carrying Spyderco PM2 as an EDC knife. And one of the things that I find I love about it is a lot of my EDC tasks of like opening packages, cutting paper things for my daughter, getting into zip ties, like a, a precise tip is handy to me in an EDC knife. And so I like that this has a fairly precise tip while still being a pretty robust blade stock overall, like I said. Um, being an integral, I mentioned in my uh, unboxing of this knife, I just feel a certain sense of niceness when I handle an integral. I've never handled an integral that I didn't think seemed nice. The first integral knife that I ever got was actually a lion steel. It was the SR11A, if I'm not mistaken. That was an aluminum integral. And uh, I'd gotten it secondhand, and it was not in perfect shape. But even then, like, getting a knife that wasn't integral felt special to me. And every integral I've owned since has just, I don't know, I feel like there's a quality to it. And I like the sense that the handle is all hewn from one piece of material. It just feels different and cool. And uh, aesthetically, the, the vibe it gives to having just kind of like a, a more closed back of the knife and then not having any hardware anywhere other than the pivot. It just looks really, really cool to me. I like it quite a bit. So I feel like, I think these were um, 400, 450 bucks. I don't know if there's any more available anywhere at this point. Joe said he thinks they made about 450 of them total. Um, I think that's what he said, not he thinks that what they meant. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he said 450 total. And there were a couple of different specs. Some of them had a little carbon fiber inlay. And um, I think there may have been some black ones. But for altogether 450 pieces, I doubt there's any left like at retailers right now. And I don't know if this is the only run of them they'll ever do. I don't know much about this knife. But I feel like for the price that they were offered at being, uh, I think they were a little bit above 400 bucks to get a really nice M390 functionally very good blade on an integral titanium handle with this really good milling on it that just A, looks nice to me, and B, feels good in hand. I feel like the, the materials and being made by Riat, the, the consistency of their tolerances and the function, I mean, it seems very fair to me in terms of the value of how much knife you're getting for that money based on my knowledge of knives and the way I calculate <laughs> how things are worth. Obviously, that's pretty subjective, but we're playing with all very premium materials here. They're all finished really, really well, and it's just, it's come together to make quite the nice knife. Um, one of the things I was concerned about that Joe even warned me about was that the pocket clip is a little bit pokey. Um, if you look at where the clip ends, where it terminates here at the point, it's just a little bit of a point. Um, and so it is a little bit sharp when I rub my finger across it. And I have noticed that when it's in pocket, I've been really trying to make sure I don't like snag it on anything because it does feel a little bit snaggy. So both front pocket or back pocket, I just like, if I'm sitting down in the car, I don't want to accidentally like slide forward and have this catch on the seat or something. So it's something to be aware of. Um, and then also if like my daughter's climbing all over me because I'm her personal jungle gym, um, I, I want to make sure I take this knife out of my pocket first. Whereas a lot of my knives with a clip that's not pokey or sharp or anything, like I don't have to worry about that. So that's a thing to consider in my opinion. Um, but the good thing is that in hand, I don't feel it really at all. Um, in a hammer grip, in a saber grip, it just, it kind of lands right in like a, a hollow of my palm <laughs> where it's, it's kind of landing like right in here in a spot where it's just getting enough clearance to where I'm, I'm really not, it's not bothersome at all to me in hand. Um, if I put it in reverse grip, I start to feel it with my fingertips over here, um, but it's not the worst. It's passable still. Um, reverse grip draw cut, I feel like this isn't really the type of knife I'd be putting in this grip, but there it's actually not so bad. So I mean, it's it's fine. Um, it's not my favorite pocket clip. I would change it if I could. I would round that quite a bit. It might not look aesthetically as fantastic as it looks, because I do think this clip looks really good on this knife, but I just, my personal preference, 
nine times out of ten is going to be to pick the thing that feels and works better than the thing that looks better. Um, I love it when knives also look good, and I think it's certainly possible to accomplish something that looks fantastic while being functionally excellent, but this is just one of those cases where I feel like they picked aesthetics over the ultimate functionality of the clip, and uh, that's their prerogative as the designer and the manufacturer to, to make the clip how they want, but that's how I feel about it. So, ultimately, I think that's really kind of my only gripe so far with the knife is the clip. Um, and it's not a deal breaker. Like, if I owned this knife, if it was sitting in my knife collection, it would get carried. I would carry this knife, not super frequently, based on everything that I own, um, but not never either. <laughs> I've got other knives that I could foresee carrying less. I really like the way this knife feels in hand. I really like the action on it. It's got, I described it in my unboxing as being very similar to my Sharp by Design Evo Typhoon, which is also manufactured by Riat. And they've got different detents in them. Uh, Brian from Sharp by Design, his detent is, is very specific in the structure. And instead of being a ceramic ball, it's kind of like, from what I understand, kind of a pyramid shaped thing. And it, it makes a difference. Um, but this is the closest knife that I can recall feeling to the way that that action felt dialed in terms of how it deploys. It's a really crisp break and it just, I don't know. It's it's not like I'm having to build a ton of pressure for how snappy it flies out. A lot of knives I feel like are really snappy on deployment because they have super stiff detents. And this one's like a medium stiffness, but it still flies out as if it's a really stiff detent. I hope that makes sense, but it really does. It just rockets out and it's a, a nice, well-tuned level of pressure that you have to put on it to accomplish that. Um, I do wish there were multiple deployment methods. I would find that to be a little bit better. I really can't spidey flick this, even though the fuller is a little bit exposed. I just can't get the right kind of torque or leverage on it to make that work. If I could, I would love to be able to middle finger flick this knife. Um, even if it was thumb studs, I think it would be fun. That's just me though. <laughs> um, flippers are really nice and I enjoy a good well-tuned flipper. Like I said, the, the action on this one is certainly a strength on it, but I do find myself, the more that time goes on, the less flippers excite me. And that's just a me thing, clearly. I'm just thinking out loud here. But like when I started knife collecting, a flipper like this would have just been incredible incredible to me. But there are so many good flippers at this point. Um, and just my own tastes have kind of evolved a little bit to where like my favorite way to deploy a knife just isn't a flipper tab. It's not anymore. I enjoy it, like I said, but it doesn't get me as excited as a well-tuned knife that I can middle finger flick. Um, really, that's kind of all I prefer to flippers, I guess. But yeah, I don't know. I just think it would, it would take this knife a little bit further for me if I could use that fuller to middle finger flick it. I want to, and I can feel that it's close, so it's just like it's teasing me a little bit that I can't. <sighs> what have I not talked about yet? I guess that's kind of it on my first impressions. I don't need to dive super deep into this. I'm still learning about this knife and how it performs, and um, it feels pretty good in pocket. It's not overly heavy. It feels like, a, a, frankly, a really good weight for an integral titanium frame lock. It's not super lightweight, but it doesn't feel like it's trying to be, and it's definitely not heavy. I feel like for its size, it is the right weight for the way it's constructed. It feels confidence-inspiring and substantial without feeling unnecessarily heavy. And I'm all for, like, I enjoy it when a knife is lightweight for the sake of being lightweight. Like the Benchmade bug out and bail out are knives that I carry relatively frequently. I like carrying knives that are made of carbon fiber and materials that get them really lightweight. And sometimes that pursuit of making a knife lightweight is kind of its shining feature. But on other knives, I like it when they don't make that the preference. Like I think this knife would be missing something if they had tried to make it as lightweight as possible. Instead, they've really kind of refined it in a way that it's a, it's a different sensation. Um, there's a different sense of quality when things have an appropriate amount of weight to them. And I think sometimes people get a little too caught up in 
the spec sheet of, oh, well, there's another knife with the same blade length and it weighs a half an ounce less. So that's the better knife. And it's like, I mean, that's a, a very subjective conclusion to come to. So I, I like the weight of this. I like the way it feels in hand. I like the contouring of the handle, the way that the grooves are cut. It gives me a great finger placement. Um, I find that for me, saber grip is kind of my primary grip that I go to in a knife. And in saber grip, this feels very good. There's no jimping anywhere on this knife other than the flipper tab. That's the only spot. And a flipper tab, I feel like, especially a tiny one like this, should have some jimping. I haven't failed. I haven't slipped off of this flipper tab once. And so I really like that it's got the right level of traction. It doesn't hurt my finger. My finger lands in a nice smooth spot on the integral back of this knife. Like, it's really well made. I'm, I'm finding myself quite impressed with this knife. I've never, I can't recall getting a Reat made knife that I thought was bad. But there are certainly some that stick out. And oftentimes I find the ones that stick out are the ones where it's a good designer who's partnered with Riat and who's gotten a lot out of Riat. And I think this is one of those cases. My favorite Riat knife to this day that I've ever handled, owned, anything, pardon me, has been my Sharp by Design Evo Typhoon. And this isn't far behind it, in my opinion. Um, in fact, a lot of the things that I prefer about that knife over this one are just kind of stylistic. Um, this one feels every bit as nice, especially being an integral as that Evo Typhoon did to me. So yeah, I'm impressed so far. This might have been a little all over the place, but it's my first impressions and I'm still formulating where I'm at with this one. But uh, I like to do this and kind of check in at the beginning. I've missed it on a couple of knives lately just because I've been too busy. So I'm gonna try to, to stay in the groove of doing a first impressions and then doing a full review at the end to see if anything changes, if I learn anything new, if I find that something appears to me that kind of makes me like the knife less, or if I learn to love a knife more by carrying and using it, I, I like taking that process. So as of my first impressions, that's where I'm at. I'm really liking this knife. I, uh, I'm intrigued by it, and I, I'm not at all <laughs> sick of putting it in my pocket yet. The pocket clip is a little bit sharp. That's really my only gripe with it so far, and uh, that happens. So there you have it. That'll be my first impressions on the Matt Diskin IDF made by Riat. Um, I'm going to link down below to Joe's channel. He is the Knife Whisperer. Uh, so check him out if you haven't already. He's uh, going to be reviewing my ZT0620 as I review this. So you can look forward to seeing that on his channel. And uh, yeah, this has been an interesting one. So thanks for checking it out with me. And I'll see you guys on the next one.